Under the edit menu, there's a choice called auto align layers. Auto align layers uses the same technology that's used to stitch panoramas. And if I usually try out um, auto to begin with, it will try to figure out the best setting to use. I'll click OK. And now it's comparing all those layers. And if, you can, if it thinks that things look similar between the layers, it will try to line them up. Might take a little bit of time because how many images do we have? We had quite a few. But let's see if it was able to do it. I'm going to just turn off the eyeball on the topmost layer, watch the trees and part of the grass. That looks pretty close to being aligned, doesn't it? Now, it had to move it over quite a bit. I can see some issues on the edge here, um, but that's just because we have multiple pictures stacked up. And I think I, the camera was moving like to the right or left, and you're seeing like the edges of multiple pictures. Turn off the next one. It looks pretty darn close. Next one. Look at those guys. That could be a fun little GIF animation if they just did that. Now that one didn't work out. That either means, means I moved too much. I probably, yeah, it looks like I lowered myself so that the perspective was different. Let's see if it's the same with the images that are underneath. So I think we have two sequences of images here. Doesn't mean we can't use the other ones necessarily, it just means we can't use the background because it doesn't line up. So let's see if we can get away with it with just the top three images, if we can come up with something that's good or not. One, two, three. Okay. So what I'm going to do is decide to start on one side of the image or the other. I'll use only the top three images just because the other ones don't line up right now. They're a different composition. I moved a little bit lower. So I'll turn off those layers for now. And I'm going to turn off everything except for the bottom most image. And I'm just going to turn on the layer above and say, is there anything about it that I like better than this layer? And I actually don't think, let's see, not much. Let's turn on the layer above that. And that one, I like the lion that's in the middle. Do you see how he looks over towards us? And I might like the lion on the far left because he just starts to almost separate there. But I don't like on the top one, this guy's eyes closing. So what I do is I click on the topmost layer and I add a layer mask. A layer mask is uh, found at the bottom here. We've used layer masks on the other days. And I mentioned before that if you hold down the option key, Alt and Windows, it would fill the mask with black. That means hide everything that's on this layer. And so I'm going to do that option click to create a black mask. And then I'll come in with my paintbrush tool, painting with white. And now I'm going to paint wherever I want to use the other photo, the photo that's on top. If I want to remember what that photo looks like, you can hold down the shift key and click within the mask. If you hold down the shift key and click, it disables the mask. And so if I look at that, I say, okay, that's where I wanted the line in the middle. And I also like the line on the left better. So I'll come in here with a soft edge brush. And this is where I should be zoomed up because I've got to be real careful. If I print this big, I've got to make sure that there's not like a double edge or anything. And let's see what happens if I go over to where his head is. It's a matter of deciding where is the most visually unnoticeable transition to, uh, to where to stop painting. If you can't tell how much of that image you used, there's a trick. If you press the backslash key, the one that leans towards the left, it will show you a red overlay. And wherever it's not covered with red, that's where you're using that layer. Um, all it's doing is it's taking the mask that you see here and it's overlaying it on the picture as red. So wherever the mask is is where it's not uh, using that layer. And I can see exactly where it is, so that's where I need to analyze the picture. I see a tiny hint of red right there, which means part of that's not being used. I can paint while this mask is visible. Let's make sure I got that. So we got those. Then I think I wanted to use the guy over here as well, so I can come up, paint there, because I get a little bit more separation. And it's right there where I need to, to bump into the other that I need to be very careful where I paint. And it's up to me where I think I can get away with stopping or I could paint its entire body to get it in. I think I can get away with going right there. 
And just to be sure I painted across the whole thing, I'll hit backslash again. You see that little red spot in the middle where I didn't realize I hadn't painted? That's why it's always good to press that backslash key. And I can also see if I need to get a little closer in there. And let's see what that's doing. I'll hide the top layer before, after. So you see how we get a little bit of an adjustment. I can hide the mask by holding down shift, uh, disabling it to see if there's any other part I might want to use from that layer. Maybe I like the, the uh, line on the right. So I can come over here. Paint where he is, and just got to be very careful where I stop painting. It's got to look natural wherever the leaves are, wherever it bumps into the nose of the other one, so that you don't see any double leaves or other similar issues. And you can either get the whole body or just that. It all depends on how much you moved. When I'm done, I press backslash again. Look for any red spots where I don't realize it. Uh, what's going on there? All right. And then the final thing I would do is, if I'm only going to use two layers, but I ended up loading in a bunch, I don't want the file to be this big. So I can go to the side menu of the Layers panel, and there's a choice uh, within there that's called Discard Hidden Layers, I think. No, Delete Hidden Layers. And that means throw away the layers I didn't use, the ones that have the eyeballs turned off. So if I choose that, it should bring me down to just the two layers I had. And the final thing I'd need to do is to crop the image. If the image is looking like a rectangle, uh, there is a choice under the image menu called trim, which would trim away the empty parts. But I don't think it's a perfect rectangle. So uh, that means I'll have to use the crop tool. I need to clear out the numbers I had in there before. And one thing about using the crop tool is if you get really close to the edge of your picture, You'll find it snaps to the edge, and it seems to be impossible to crop out the small portion. Uh, hold on the control key. The control key temporarily turns off snapping. The control key only works after you've pressed the mouse button. So don't control click, click and then control. You know, click, control. Um, so I might do that. <clears throat> 